Hello, welcome to Tamer Talk. My name is Josh. I'm and I'm Lila. I was a bit off there, but you know, this is our first time doing an official greeting. No <laughs> I, uh, I was nervous about starting the show, so you know, you're, you're allowed to yeah. be a little bit late. All right, so um, for this episode, we're going to be talking about where to buy Digimon V pets, uh, what to look for um, in a seller, uh, how to determine, you know, what a good seller looks like. Um, just any extra details about that. Um, just a quick disclaimer before we start this. Um, a lot of these services or websites um, are probably going to be unable to ship, um, at least in a timely fashion, just because of the uh, the current situation. So uh, keep that in Bummer. mind. Bummer. Yeah, not the yeah. not the best time to be ordering anything, let alone uh, <laughs> a, a very luxury item. Um, yeah. But some of these some of these on this list are, are, are still still uh, reliable options if you want something fast. So Yeah. We'll get thankfully. Into that. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah. These, these are these are essential to uh to, to true tamers. So you know <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get your fix, baby. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. So before like we get started into like you know where to buy them and everything like that i just wanted to go over like a couple of things to look for when buying especially when you're buying used items which a lot of these are older items so obviously they are going to be used or well sometimes you can find them new but they're like hella expensive like who's gonna yeah okay so but the box um, adds like 50 dollars sometimes so. yeah exactly it's insane it's yeah, totally it's... ridiculous um but yeah so i just wanted to like include a couple tips for looking um you know when you're buying a used device because some of them always don't always look good but there's um sometimes they look bad and it's not they're not actually like in horrible condition and I wanted to like explain that um and when I say that I kind of mean like if a device has like a large dent or um a, a large scratch or something like that it doesn't always mean that it's in horrible condition it just has like cosmetic damage and the device itself might actually be functioning just fine um you know so what i like to look at when i'm looking at uh pets is like if i look at the back of the screws like if the screws are like insanely like rusted and you know obviously that means they've been like exposed to a lot of moisture and they've probably been used very heavily and if they've been exposed to moisture they're more likely to have moisture on the inside of the device which can definitely lead to problems so um you know it's not always the case but that i think screws like the back screws are a good indicator of that um also usually not always but usually the older devices will have like a little sticker on the back and i think is that like the item number sticker like do you know what that is josh i'm not entirely <laughs> sure let me yeah i'm not oh, really I sure don't japanese but it's, <laughs> it's uh i don't know if you can see the, the yeah whatever the little sticker is on the back yeah so like there's usually like, a little sticker and like it will say like a number or will say like something in japanese usually um and like usually if the sticker is in pretty good condition i feel like that's a good like it gives you a good idea of how much the pet has been used and i think that's really important like um because it's not always like how roughly it was handled that was the problem it's like if it was used a lot because i know that the these little tiny computers they can only run for so long yeah so if they've been used a lot already that means they've had like a lot of different rounds of batteries in them and you know um it's they're they're not going to have as long of a, a life if they've been used heavily also um, depends so. on where they've been stored if it's uh, yes yeah if the sticker's been uh like messed with or it looks like it has like water damage then that's like mm, mm-hmm. a good indicator yeah it's like might be this was else. dropped in a puddle yeah, <laughs> by a <laughs> five-year-old a child <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean there can be like there's all kinds of little indications but i think like sometimes like a badly scratched up like i especially like in my experience collecting tamagotchis i've had like pets that run like new beautifully and like the stickers intact the screw is like really really nice looking but there's like a giant scratch on the front it's like somebody like dropped it once or something but other than that it's been treated pretty well you know mm-hmm. so you, you kind of that's something you learn over time i think um but yeah um there was something else i wanted to say but i'm kind of forgetting it now but it might come up later <laughs> Maybe, yeah we'll it'll probably come back later <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah so i just wanted to before we get into like actually buying devices oh i remembered what it was oh cool good. <laughs> okay so um sometimes like i've 
this is also like a Tamagotchi thing. I have honestly like most of my V pet or my Digimon V pets that I have bought. If they do have a package, it's because they're like a newer device and I bought them new myself. Um, but I know that occasionally with um, Tamagotchis and I believe some Digimon, the packaging will be extremely yellowed and the device itself yeah. is new. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't always mean that the the pet inside is going to be damaged. It's just that the plastic on the outside was probably exposed to like heat or something, and therefore it kind of like warped or turned a different color or something bad. So like, also the the condition of the packaging does not always indicate the condition of the item itself. But it does um, indicate that you might get a sick deal because a lot of Japanese yes, sellers they yes. will they will uh. <laughs> mark down the price substantially if there's like any kind of damage on the packaging like oh damage oh. to the packaging like they'll list that and then you look at the, the damage and it's like maybe like a slight nick on the side and they'll knock off like 15 dollars or something insane so Ooh, it's amazing like yeah. i seriously i got this um uh i'm not gonna get into it whatever <laughs> i'm not gonna get it's a tamagotchi thing i don't want to get into it it's gonna take too long no anyway <laughs> so let's get into um let's get into like where exactly we can buy these items, right? Because I think that's something, like whenever new people join uh, Discord or Facebook groups and they don't really have devices, they're always like, where can I buy them? Where can I buy them? And it's hard to, you can say, oh, you can buy from here, you can buy from there. But the reason I wanted to make this episode was because it's hard to concisely, like, you know, explain what, like what kind of, um, what kind of experience you're going to get from each of these sellers. So I wanted to go more into detail about that. So to begin with, I think I wanted to start off with eBay because it's the usual like, suspect. It's like, yeah, that's where that's, <laughs> if you want used items. That's where you, that's like the first place you look. So. Yeah. And, it, and like, it's not in my experience, I've not had like a bad experience buying from eBay personally. Um, I mean, there's been one or two times where it's like kind of sketch or like they're really slow on shipping. But for the most part, I um, I do trust them. Um, uh, Prices tend to be super inflated. That's the only thing. I I don't don't have many issues buying from eBay, but browsing eBay can be pretty uh, stressful just seeing how high these prices get. And then you start thinking like, oh, it's like people are going to start pricing their own v-pads based on these insanely inflated prices and you're like oh is like how how much is this really affecting the market so it's that's just yeah exactly yeah Yeah. that's the worst part is like people are like oh i want to get my money's worth of from this and like um you know so they rack up the price or whatever and or they like see one listing that sold for that much and they put theirs up to the highest price that they saw yeah and that just definitely drives up prices unfortunately it, it just ruins stuff and, and especially when ebay is like the only place to get certain items like if, you, mm. if you're after a very specific um model or uh, like one of the 0.5 pendulums which can be pretty rare and mm. you see one there for like three hundred dollars and it's available nowhere else then that's you're gonna that, this you're price gonna is three hundred dollars that's how much it costs so it's like it's just upsetting it's but. so upsetting and then like i don't want to like blame noobs because this isn't their fault but like when people who are new to collecting see those prices they kind of think that oh this is normal and they don't think to think they don't think to look elsewhere other than ebay yeah. and so they'll they'll buy stuff from ebay which kind of makes the prices go up as well yeah it's not it's not their fault they don't know any better i'm not trying to blame them but it does happen it also can be off-putting like if you if you're if you're trying to get into any hobby and you look at like oh i can't wait to get into these digimans and then you go on ebay you look up (laughs) literally like just digimon vpet and you see that one of like one of the like listings of a device that you think looks cool is like 300 dollars, or for the pendulums it's 130 dollars, and you're just like ooh. Maybe yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's very off-putting. It's like, I don't know about this. That's why That's why I'm so glad we have the Digital Monster version 20th English. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's, so, such, it's so cool. Like, so many more people are getting into it, I think, because fun, it's so much more accessible. And the fun thing about those is that eBay sellers will list it for $15 above what they should be selling for. So that's and it, fun. And it, and it sucks because, like, like I said before, they people don't know what like where else to buy these they just see it on ebay and they're like i've yeah. never seen this before i'm like, gonna this buy it. it and it's like this is the price. So. no no do some research hopefully we're educating the public y'all okay yeah. so um yeah and then the last thing i mean the last thing about e- buying from ebay i wanted to mention is that like even if something sketchy happens ebay has been around for long enough and they're pretty reputable and they have like the money back guarantee yep. so 
if you mess up and something bad happens with your item, you will get your money back, thankfully. Even yeah. if you're getting scammed, like you will get your money back no yeah, matter what. Yeah, pretty good about that. I know um, mm -hmm. some people, um, and this pops up every time there's a new device, this happened every single time there was a, an X pre-order. Uh, people would put up listings for those pre-orders on eBay because um, they would, I guess, conceivably buy it from Premium Bandai. When they get it mm. into their hands, they would ship it off to you. And not all of those are reputable or uh, like in any way legitimate. I, I, I saw some horror stories on some of the Facebook groups where people would buy from those sellers and well after everyone already received their X2s and their um, X3s, like... Uh, that seller has either not sent it yet or just disappeared completely off the yeah. face of the planet. Oh, so that's it's pretty so bad. scary. Um, yeah, it's very scary. We'll get into some better ways to order the uh, new releases later on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm glad you. That. I'm glad you brought that up for the pre-orders because I didn't even think it. I forgot that eBay even does some of those pre-orders because it's just not a good idea. Yeah, at no, all. It's, it's better. Like, to just and they're usually way off. overpriced. Yeah, just don't, don't, don't pre-order anything on is, eBay. Like, they, they won't even be like terribly overpriced. Like you'll see prices and they'll they'll seem fair um, for what you're buying, but it's like at the same time, is it too good to be true? And a lot of the time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. All right, so um, I kind of lumped Mercari into eBay because it's kind of a similar idea of like a, a platform for people to sell their used items. Um, Mercari isn't uh, auction based, though. I don't believe. I don't think I no. I haven't seen auctions on Mercari. It's like a straight up. Hmm. Uh, you just like this is the price, and and you buy. Oh, I think it, some. I think some sellers can. Um, they'll uh, say best offer, so it's yeah. kind of yeah. But it's not like uh, auction style. Um, I've never really, I think I've bought one or two items from Mercari. I'm not that uh, familiar with them, but I do think they also have a money back guarantee. They um, do. So I have a story. Um, I've used Mercari <laughs> once in my lifetime, and it was to get um, a Beelzebub on Pendulum 20th. <gasps> and I think the price at the time that I bought it for was like $70 or something. So maybe $70, a little bit lower, which is, um, at, at right now, that would be like, unreal like i would buy that and i own one i would buy that but back then it was also a pretty good deal um uh i think it was it was said it was used but it was in good condition um he sent it to me um it got here um decently fast because they have to ship out within three days um mm -hmm. for mercari um or i think the either order gets canceled or um you just automatically get your money back uh so I, i'm not entirely sure um but it came I opened it, pulled the tab, and the screen was like all black. And it just, I hit the reset button over and over again, nothing happened. Tried uh, everything I possibly could. I tried inserting the tab, removing the tab, uh, replace the battery, literally everything I possibly could. And it did not work at all. So. Oh my God. I think <laughs> I remember you telling me this story. Yeah, it was no, a long this, time ago. But, this was oh traumatizing. I was so upset because. I had wanted one of those things for a while and to get it and it just didn't work. Um, but I immediately put in um, a request for a return. I sent pictures um, and Mercari okayed the return and the money back like almost instantly. And they made it oh, super wow. easy to, uh, to send it back to the seller um, who apologized, whatever. <laughs> um, uh, was it new in package when you bought it? No, it was. It said it was used, but it was working. Oh. So. Oh, I wonder what happened. That's so weird. It's possible that like I'm not I'm not going to like blame the seller like, like I'm I'm not going to blame the seller because, the Pendulum Twentieths tend to be pretty finicky in terms of the mm. battery. Like I know you have to press reset before you remove the battery every single time, or you risk deleting all your data because they're that, um, they're that finicky, and the quality mm. assurance on them was not the best as good a device as they are um they there are some like battery issues so maybe something happened in transit or um the tab being inserted back was done incorrectly and the seller obviously wouldn't check if it worked after that so yeah who knows um but mm. yeah I, I bought one from ebay for like 80 dollars after that yeah and uh. they took 10 days to ship it so it was just like one thing after another to get that device but but yeah, I um, oh my god. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I miss those days of eighty dollar pendulum twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was 
those were pretty pretty fun days but now mm. what, what was it like six months ago yeah like literally i remember it like it was yesterday because it <laughs> because was, it was. <laughs> so dumb oh it's so dumb it's so dumb anyway next on the list i guess we have um proxy sites like zen market Baiyi from japan um basically all of these are services that let you browse um japan centered auctions or like auctions from japanese sellers only um you would buy through like yahoo japan auctions things like that and they will buy the product for you it will get sent to their warehouse and then you'll pay for shipping from that warehouse to you so it's a pretty good avenue to get items that you otherwise would not have any access to um there are some sellers on Yahoo Japan auctions that like won't deal with proxy services, which can be frustrating because you because they'll still show you the listing um, through the proxy. I wish they could just they would just wouldn't and they wouldn't get my yep. hopes up because I'll see like an, an insane oh. deal for like a like a pendulum um, something or other that I really want and it'll say you cannot bid on this item or this seller does not deal with proxy services. And it's like why like why it's money it's the same like why know. would you I, do that? I guess guys? they don't want to either they don't trust the intermediary aspect of it or they don't, I don't know they don't, they don't like anybody who's not japanese i don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. um one, one thing to keep in mind is that for for these proxy services uh a lot of, for when i because I used, I used a proxy service to buy from yahoo japan auctions once and i think i used buy uh you have to pay for shipping from the seller to the warehouse as well which can be like obnoxious to get that extra like like eight bucks or so tacked onto the price because if you win an auction every other like extra dollar above what you paid or won the auction for is like making the deal a little less sweet i know i bought i bought an excel uh which the, the already big mistake so um <laughs> but i thought i was getting a good deal on it i think i, I bought it i got i won it for like 40 bucks on uh on on uh from buy and uh, it's it was used and it's new on eBay for seventy. So I'm like, wow, I'll, I'll save thirty dollars. So the shipping from the seller to the warehouse was eight bucks, and then the shipping from the warehouse to me was like twenty five or something. So I ended up paying more <laughs> for oh used. Oh my god! And it took longer to get here than I'm sure no. you would. So that's yeah, just, that, okay. Yeah, that's the thing with proxies. It's like you have to like you need to know what you're doing a little bit and yeah. like I literally wrote that down when I was making like our little list or whatever it's like I li when I started using I've used Zen Market like quite a bit and okay. um when I started using Zen Market um like I literally had somebody like hold my hand and walk me through it and, and they were like look the best way to like make this worth it is that like you need to ship multiple items to the warehouse because they'll, they'll they'll hold your items at the warehouse for like a month mm -hmm. or something like that so like <laughs> if you're like if you're like me and you usually buy like something or one or two pieces i mean i used to be more so like that not as much now but like you know buying a couple pieces every month yeah then <laughs> you know it's like um especially it's so it's so tempting on zen market because you can get really really good yeah, um, they, they get deals. really low like especially if you yeah. can win the auctions like because sometimes there's so many that some of them go unnoticed or mm. you'll, you'll you'll bid on something and the price will stay low um, it's just mm -hmm. it's just so good um, yeah because like so, so many people like aren't it's not as competitive as like you know the american websites so there aren't as many like like the, these items aren't they're more common in japan and so like people aren't like looking for them as hard as we are i don't think absolutely but they're yeah. yeah and there aren't as many american or international people like looking um on these websites because yeah they're just they just aren't as many it's just like it's pretty fun but um but yeah so like one of the one of the important things to do i think is that if you are going to be using zen market and you don't want to like spend spend way too much on shipping so that to, to the point that it's not worth it like what happened with your um ax is it axel or excel i always excel. want to say it's because it, it comes excel, from accelerator okay. yeah right okay <laughs> I mean, it sucks. So who cares, right? Yeah, whatever. But um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah. So like the my big like tip is like order multiple things, and then because you will have to pay shipping for each item to get to the warehouse. But then once um, all your items are in the warehouse, they'll pack it all up for you together, and then th they combine the shipping for that one package. Yeah, because it's just one, one big 
bundle. You'll, yeah, you'll save more it's like Christmas time yeah. for yourself. <laughs> it's just it's, it's rough for me because like when I order an item, I want that what now. I want to like, oh, I know, I know, I know. Book, so. yeah, yeah, most of the time, like if I would buy a bunch of stuff on Zen Market and it was like over the course of a month, then I would like pay DHL to get it like in uh, the yeah, next yeah. couple days, you know, and like. <laughs> You are spending the extra money, but like I think it balanced out so that like I wasn't paying a ridiculous amount for shipping, um, and I got it fast, yes. boy. That's ideal. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. I think, um, I think we'll touch on. We t- we'll t- I guess we'll touch on uh, proxies a little bit later for something else, but um, mm-hmm. for now, I I the next one is Amazon Japan, and you have way more experience with that than I do. So yes wanna. i love amazon japan like i i think I've, I've bought um i bought my i bought a black x1 from uh amazon japan and i bought i might have bought my white x1 from there i'm not really sure i can't remember but i have done a lot of uh tamagotchi pre-orders on amazon japan and it's cool because they've made it like extremely accessible for um at least for americans i'm not really sure about uh international users but like for um, americans they've made it extremely easy you can make an account on amazon japan um and they have like a whole english like that you can change the whole language to english and like each item that you click on it will tell you if it is available to ship globally mm-hmm. um and then the global shipping is actually DHL and it's only six dollars, which That's, is like what the heck? That's bonkers. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Like it's so cool. Like, um, you know, so you're not really paying that much for shipping to begin with. Yeah, and DHL and, is um, so fast. DHL Excuse is me. so fast. Yeah, so like as like literally like three days after the the like if I if I pre-ordered something like literally three days after. Um, it's like released. I get it. And that's, it's that's amazing. Sick. It's, it's really so sick. Cool. And like, um, and you know, Amazon is like super reputable. Like I yeah. don't have to worry about anything. Like DHL is super cool. Like I just had really good experiences from, um, Amazon Japan. Um, but the only thing is like not all sellers will ship stuff internationally, yeah. but usually with Bandai items, it seems like they, there's usually an option. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything bad to say about Amazon Japan. I haven't had any cool. like bad experiences whatsoever. And I have ordered quite a few items from them. Um, so I definitely, you know, it seems like weird, like, oh, can I make us uh, an account on a Japanese site? But yeah, you can. It's kind of like, it's, I feel like people don't know about it. I don't know. <laughs> but it's, it's I mean, really I, cool. I, I, I've never, I've never done that. So I'm, I'll probably yeah. take a yeah, look. Yeah, check it I, out. You know, when I'm in the mood. <laughs> To buy yeah more yeah <laughs> um I, I think things can get a little bit inflated there kind of quickly i know when i bought my x1 my black x1 it had been out for a couple of months or so and it was like 90 dollars oh man uh yeah oh, i know man. but so but when i i know i know i know i think wait i think it was or was it like 70 honestly it might have been uh, it might have been 90 That's the shipping 70s yeah, it's a Fair. big difference. I can't remember. I can't remember, but it was like, but, 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 uh, like pre-ordering like the Tamagotchi meats and everything, like I actually got a cheaper deal than a lot of other people who were um, ordering from like Japan you want or elsewhere. Like I was getting the best deal out of all of them. Cool. So, um, I mean, I think, I think it's harder with Digimon items because they are premium Bandai items. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, keep an eye out. You never know. Yeah. You um, never know. I guess I guess is we can lump in regular Amazon. I'm not regular Amazon, but like um, yeah, <laughs> like other other yeah. Amazon. Your your local Amazon. Your local like mom and pop Amazon shop. Yeah. Because um, um, you can buy Digimon uh, products on Amazon, like regular Amazon. You'll just see them for eBay prices, so it's going to have that absurd markup. Uh, it's, it's worth mentioning, but also you can buy the uh, English DM twenties as well. When yeah, stock, for twenty so. bucks, they're not inflated. They are correct. Yes, that is that is great. what they are worth. Uh, do yes. not pay any more than twenty dollars for those. Uh, but yes. uh, I think that alone makes uh, your local Amazon worth the mention, just because. Oh yeah. Like even if they're their only purpose is to sell the DM twenty E, that is a valid purpose. <laughs> So oh yeah, and worth the mention. Um, um okay. I did, I did buy my um, D two uh, version fifteenth um, 
uh, Metal Guru Mon Color Digivice from oh, so regular Amazon. Of that. So good. It was like, I think at the time it the price was inflated a bit, so I paid like. 150 for it. Yeah, that's a good price. But like, it's nowadays, so worth it. I'm so good happy. Price. I was like, when I saw it, I was like, oh my god, I have to buy this now. Like, I just knew. Oh, like, it was man. one of those things where I just knew. I was like, I have to buy this now. There's... If I wa- ever want to own one of these, I have yeah. to do it. That's the thing. Guys, if you want something and you have the money, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying blow all your money. Like, I'm saying if you have the money, like, set aside for, like, your hobby or whatever, like, you know, and you see something pop up, don't hesitate. Yeah. Like, get on that. Especially get on Especially the digivices, because those, like, even people who have no interest in any other aspect of this hobby, like, no, no, nothing having to do with the V-Pets, nothing having to do with anything else, they will fiend for the digivices. They, like, oh, I yeah. think that's why they're so inflated, because someone could see a brick or, like, even a pendulum and be like, Oh, what is that? Oh, what did you want Tamagotchis? But if they yeah. see <laughs> me, if you, if, you, if you see the, uh, if they see like the old adventure Digivice, like the one you have, they'll be like, "Hey, uh, I that's remember from that the one. anime. This is the one I that remember Matt that." Had. They'll, they'll, they'll probably be more likely to pick that, pick that up. So. Oh yeah, Digivices are insane. Like, seriously, like don't you won't regret it. It's like. It's gonna wait, go up way in price. Like if you buy it new, like yeah, just, like like the just new do it. Uh, the, the you're gonna regret it. If you don't. Is uh, c- uh, pre-ordering for eighty dollars, which is a it's a hefty price tag for something for the pre-order, but I have a feeling that's gonna go way way up later. So I'm I'm, I'm still okay. on the fence about buying it. My so. prediction is that a month after they're out, they're gonna be selling for two hundred. That's my prediction. That's that's insane. That's insane. I know, but. Okay, maybe like three months. Yeah, I think that's probably correct. Maybe three months, they will still be uh, they'll be up. They'll probably be up to like 150 or something after three months. I, I can easily see that happening. It's gonna be insane. It's gonna be insane, especially because this new anime is on hold. But it's so good, and it's, I think it's like got a Digimon lot of is promise. like I going think, up in uh, popularity. Oh, it's so good! It's so good. And like, I was super bummed when it when they like. Uh, not cancel it. I keep wanting to say cancel, they postponed it. it. It's delayed. Yeah, delayed. It's mm-hmm. only, only hopefully, um, hopefully it comes back soon, but uh, things I need to know. normalize first. Yeah. Oh, I loved watching it with everybody, and I'm so behind on the anime. I was like, I can handle this. Yeah. Like, I can watch an episode a week, you know, but now it's like, but, you know, anyway, back to back yeah, to said, buying stuff. Speaking, speaking of pre-orders, <laughs> um, the, next, the next way to buy is uh, Premium Bandai. So, um... Neither of us have ever used Premium yep. Bandai directly to buy. A, There's a good reason yeah, why my to buy uh, any of these. Um, <laughs> so they'll they'll sh- pop, like they'll pop up on the site like like when the X3 popped up or the X2 went up for pre-order, the prices will look incredible. So it'll be like th- it'll say like thirty dollars or something for for like the X2 or for the X3, and you're like, whoa, that's lower than literally anywhere else I'm seeing this. So they'll charge you thirty dollars shipping, <laughs> so it'll it'll be sixty dollars still to to get to get the pre order, which is still a really like like it's like a fair price for what they um, end up going for because everywhere else will sell it for like fifty or something um, plus the shipping. Uh, but it's like deceptive because you see you see the thirty dollars price tag and you're like wow, and then they finally do ship it and you're just like ow my wallet. So. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, and like I, I've heard, the shipping takes forever. Um, it does, but like like you you think that it would get to you faster because it's get like going from the source. But I don't I don't know I don't know what uh what ends up happening um, in the yeah interim. it's it's weird. Other places get why. them first. There's um like Japan you want uh was fa- so like the, the this last release the latest release the X three the Digital Monster X three um. Premium Bandai did not ship those out to customers who bought them. And I know some of my friends are still, like, either still waiting for theirs or just got them in the mail from Premium Bandai. That thing has been out for months now. And Japan you want had them in stock and sent them out and got them into the customer's hands super fast. Um, how Japan you want got them before customers who pre-ordered, I don't know. Uh, so I don't think it's I don't think it's related to the current situation with the with the pandemic. I, I don't 
I don't know what it is, honestly. Uh, but it's you don't you don't think it was ridiculous. delayed because of the because of COVID? Then, you don't then think how so? did Japan you want to get it so fast? I guess because they're closer. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like maybe they were having issues with like international stuff. That's like, possible. Um, yeah. But 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 that at the same time, like Japan you want was able to ship it. Mm, so it's yeah. like. But they are a smaller retailer, so maybe it was like you know easier. I guess for them to do it because like if Bandai like they might have more um, like rules or something because they're a larger company. That's probably I true. don't know. It's, yeah, it's, I really it's, I don't know. Yeah. It's such a shame, though. It sucks. Yeah. Like, I'd be so disappointed. Like, you order it from the source, and then you're having to wait exactly. that long. I would that's, just be that's like, really yeah. The, that's really the big thing. You're ordering it directly from the company that that, uh, yep. that puts it out, and you'll see everyone else who ordered from, um, like, intermediaries getting it first, and you're just watching yeah. them have fun. It's like that meme where Squidward is looking out the window at SpongeBob and Patrick running. And they're yeah. They're holding their X3s, <laughs> and Squidward's sitting there with the X2, like, I hate Demon Lord. So, <laughs> so that's that. Um, though um, I did use Premium Bandai sort of because I used a proxy service called From Japan to order the X2 because I was following Humulos' lead because um, I trusted his judgment. And I ended up getting it before a lot of other people. It was faster than Japan you want. Um, the shipping I chose ended up being super fast. Uh, I think you... I don't. I can't remember exactly what type of shipping it was, um, but it was it was fairly priced, and I got it just super super quickly. So, um, if you're if you're going That's to awesome. yeah, if you're going to go order it from order from uh, Premium Bandai or you're you're pre-ordering, use a proxy service to do so. Um, I'll I'll pitch from Japan because that's the one I used, and they got it to me super fast, um, and it was it was fairly priced. The shipping was fine. Um, yeah, I yeah. Nothing that's really awesome. more to say there. I really, I really wonder. Like, I want to know if like somebody ordered the way you did with the proxy service, like from um, or for the X three, because that would be interesting to see. Like, if they got their item um, after using the proxy service, you know. You know that actually, like, if 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 it really was the case that uh, there were restrictions put in place because Bandai is such a big company, and um, because the proxy service is obviously based in Japan. Uh, maybe they would have less of an issue shipping out mm. to America or other countries. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Worth a look, I think. Uh, yeah, definitely. Curious. Yeah. Okay, so the next, next little... Is, uh... <laughs> um, the next one is my personal favorite way to buy um, uh, virtual pets is actually through Facebook groups. And, you know, it seems kind of... Like, when I first started buying from Facebook groups, it seems, like, a little bit weird. Like, you're kind of, like, you know, suspicious of the person that you're buying from because they're not a seller. You feel a little bit insecure because, you know, it's not backed up by eBay or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's like the Wild um, West. Sort of. Yeah, yeah, it really kind of is. And, um, you know, but after you get kind of used to that whole thing, I, I personally really enjoy um, buying from other collectors. And, and the reason is because collectors take good care of their items and they test extensively and they have probably maybe even used that item within the past year you know or three months or whatever you know so they know if it works and like it's also easier in my opinion to like ask for videos and photos of the item working because it's not like a, a large retailer or something who has like so many orders and so many people asking them questions it's just one person doing this on their own time mm -hmm. so um i think that is super beneficial when it comes to buying an item um and uh you know there are of course like uh not so great things about buying from Facebook sellers sometimes. I think the biggest issue is people who are uh, selling their collections, they they are not used to having to ship in a, in a timely manner. Um, so, you know, like sometimes they'll be a little bit late with the shipping or not communicate that well. Yeah, it's annoying. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so you have to be a little bit persistent sometimes and be like, hey, where's my item? Like, But of course, do it nicely. Like, yeah, always be nice. Be where's nice my guys. item? Just be like, hey, so uh, do you need my address again? <laughs> yeah, just I'm like, gonna, I want my money back now. You know, don't do that. That's not nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like that is like my personally, personally, it's my favorite way to buy. Um, I did have an experience, a negative experience oh, recently, oh. with a with a um, 
with the buyer and it's not like I'm not gonna name names I was just and it's not even like you know I mean uh, I don't want to be mean I, I'm not trying to be mean it happens sometimes and like I said with fa- buying from other collectors I've had hundreds of good experiences probably or like almost like you know like tons and tons and tons of good experiences and like selling I've sold a lot of items as well and I've had really good experiences doing that as well um but with this particular item it was an item that I was looking for for a long time it was actually a pendulum 20th and it was very very well priced and this person had a huge listing of multiple items or like many many items like probably dozens of items um and they had posted across multiple uh, Facebook groups. And I'd asked them to hold the item, and they were like, yeah, but I might have to, um, you know, if someone else comes along and wants to buy it, then I'll sell it to them. And I was <laughs> like, okay, well, could you? <laughs> That's not yeah, how holding not... works, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was like, well, you know, if someone comes along, along to buy it, I will gladly take it off your hands before they do because I kind of, you know, put my foot in the door first. And um, I wasn't sure if I was ready to buy it that day, but I was probably going to be ready to buy, like, within the next two days. But if, you know, someone was going to jump on it, I was going to, you know, go ahead and buy it um so like a day or two passed by and I'm like hey I think it was actually probably like the next day and I was like hey I'm ready to buy the item and they were like oh my god I'm sorry I actually sold it and they were like yeah I I, you know I lost track of like I had it posted in so many different places like I lost track you know whatever and I was like okay is there any way that you could I I don't like asking questions like this normally I do not but because it was an item that I was really looking forward to having in my collection that I've been looking for for a long time it's hard to find um, an item like that at such a good price point I was like you know is there any way that you could refund them and um, you know sell it to me instead which I hate I hate that I even asked that question honestly I think it's kind of gross but I was desperate (laughs) so um and you did did ask first though so yeah yeah and they were like um they were like no i can't i've already printed the shipping label or whatever blah 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 and i was like okay and i was salty and it wasn't a great experience and stuff like that can happen because like i said these aren't retailers who have like an inventory that they can keep track of um but so nothing bad really happened i was just majorly disappointed but you know um i didn't like there was no money involved i didn't lose my money i didn't you know have to wait for long time a long time for shipping or something like that it wasn't anything like that it was just kind of like a just something that happened you, you so stuff with... like that can happen but yeah. you know it's it's all good in the end I will find I'll find <laughs> eventually. it eventually <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so I, I think that's my like my spiel on Facebook groups for the most part um oh yeah I wanted to dro- drop a couple of uh, group names the the big one being um the Digimon Tamers Collectors Union on Facebook. That's a really good one. We have a lot of good items pop up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and Friendly then community also, too. I love mm, everyone. Oh, there. yeah. They're so nice. Yeah, they're so nice and positive and, like, just, like, uh, very active. It's a really fun group. Yep. Um, and um, the other one I wanted to say, it's not, it's not like, super great for finding Digimon items, but there are – will be occasions where uh digimon digivices like pop up and that's the tamagotchi traders group um i will say that they are very very strict about rules um and you know so if you're going to be posting in there make sure you read all the rules first um other than that like i've i've sold a bunch of stuff there i've bought a bunch of stuff there and like i've had really good experiences i've bought quite a few digimon there I'm trying to think of what all of that I've bought. It's like <laughs> overwhelming, but um, but yeah, like it just I've had really good experiences there. And remember, if you're buying from Facebook groups, always do PayPal. Always do um, when you go to get to the option of paying for goods and services or sending to friends and family, pick goods and services so you can get your money back if something happens. Yeah. <laughs> Boom, <laughs> the end. <laughs> gotta 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 cover your butt. Yeah, gotta cover your butt. Yep. Um, I'm not familiar with this next one at all. Hobby Link Japan. Me neither. No. Hobby Link Japan. All every time I go to Hobby Link Japan, it's to find a pre-order for something. And every time I go, they've already sold out of everything. So 
That's my experience with Hobby Lake Japan. It's a very big site. Um, it's very, very popular. And so if you want to get pre-orders from them, you have to be on it the second that they're out or you're not going to get it, in my personal experience. Can you set up like notifications? I guess you can set up those site notifications. Like if a site changes at all, notify me. There are ways to do that. Um, maybe. I'm not really sure. I know you can put stuff in your wish list and maybe if it comes back into stock, it will notify you, but I'm not really sure about that. Yeah. Like I said, I don't, I, I can't remember. I may have bought something from here, but I can't remember. Um, to my knowledge, I have not. Um, but I've heard good things about them. I, I've never heard somebody having a horrible experience or anything like that. Um, I think they have a good return policy and customer service. Okay. So, yeah. There, there, there are a lot of avenues. So even if, even if, uh, a singular site runs out fast you can there are other places to turn yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's all we know <laughs> Ooh, japan you want which is my personal favorite place to order from and i f i feel like i've ordered almost every single device i own from them i know that's not true because i've ordered from facebook and ebay and uh, various places but most of my collection does come from japan you want um they are still shipping out super fast like they always ship out super in a super timely fashion um everything that they sell they'll have in the mail either next day or within three days um tops um their dhl is so blindingly fast it, it's 15 dollars, which is like, like yeah like that's more than than the nine dollars that you'd be paying for regular shipping with them but for the six dollars more you get it in three days. So that, that's at least oh, been my experience. Yeah. You get it so fast. Oh, yeah. And even now, I ordered um, I ordered uh, a device from them on a Sunday. Um, and this was, this was like two weeks ago. I ordered a device on a Sunday. It shipped on Monday, and I got it on Thursday. That's Amazing. Soibis. Awesome. And uh, <laughs> the, the, the prices are pretty fair for, for what they um, – for, for what they're – what they're putting out uh they restock decently uh frequently uh and they will always post to their social media whenever they restock so i have twitter notifications on for japan you want so that i can mm. uh, instantly know when they stock an item um and if i'm if i'm interested i want to snatch it up so if you want to do that set up twitter notifications because they will they will always post there um, that's a good tip. That's a very good tip. I did not know. I didn't even think about that. I'm not really on Twitter, but yeah, they're on Twitter and they're on Instagram. So like, usually I'll be like on Instagram and I'll see their post yeah. and it's like 12 hours ago. And I'm like, well, everything's gone now. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> so this, especially, yeah. especially like if they're posting digivices, uh, if you, if you want a digivice, that's, that's how you I, do it. Cause yeah, the, those, those will be gone. They're gone. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. Um, so the, the customer service is really good um, in, uh, in general from my experience uh, I know one time I, because of the Twitter notifications saw that they put up uh, a melon soda Tamagotchi and I've been looking for one of those at a decent price for a while now and they put it up and I guess I just, my fingers outran my mind and I ordered it even though it was $150 and after I placed the order I was like what the heck did I just do? <laughs> I just spent one hundred and fifty dollars on not a Digimon, and <laughs> it's it's an absurd price. And I remember I messaged you, and you were like, "Yeah, that's way too much." And I was I, I was like, "No, dude, yeah. no." I was already no, on the fence about no. it, but I was mortified after you told me what they were actually like worth. So I instantly messaged Japan you want because they hadn't shipped it yet, obviously. Um, and they got back to me, said we've refunded the order and canceled it. So that that was a uh, that was an experience, and I, I didn't want to have to. That that would have been one of the worst things to get in the mail because I'd be like, "This is cool. I spent one hundred fifty dollars <laughs> on this." So so oh, thank uh, I I have to thank them for uh, for refunding that and not being uh, not being sticklers about it. So thumbs up for mm. that one. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you have a negative story when it comes to um. Well, mine, mine actually resolved and was positive in my opinion. Um, 
But I do want to say, like, I've discussed this. I mean, if you guys watched my uh, the video where I unboxed my uh, pendulum that I bought from them recently, there was some corrosion in there. And, um, you know, I went through this whole thing of, like, being upset about it because I paid so much money for it, paid so much for shipping, blah, 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 blah. I wasn't expecting it to have this um, damage. And um, I messaged them, and they got back to me quite quickly, and they were like, you know, we can either do a partial refund or we can um, do a full refund and uh, we'd pay for you to ship it back. And I was like, okay. I, I didn't really want to do the full refund because um, it was a original pendulum and they can be a little bit hard to find sometimes. And it wasn't a horrible price. So I was like, okay, well, um, I think with shipping, I ended up paying like $60 for it. <clears throat> it's not bad excuse me yeah not bad and um and then i was they were like uh just tell us how much of a partial refund that you would like and we can see if we can do that and i was like oh, okay wow. and i yeah um and i didn't want to like be like 40 dollars, which was the price yeah, or whatever no. but i was like i was like i think like i think 25 would be good because i don't know i just felt i felt good about that so I messaged them. I was like, you know, could you do twenty uh, twenty five dollar partial refund? And they were like, yeah, we can do that. So they they refunded me immediately. That's um, really good. Yeah, that's a really yeah. It was it was very good. <laughs> yeah, so, so I, got, I ended up getting a pretty good I'm getting a pretty good deal on it after that. Um, it was you know a bit of work to clean it up, and the prongs do have some damage. But um, but yeah, so my uh, word to the wise on in that scenario is like you know, um, be careful when you're buying vintage items in general um if you can ask to see the battery compartment of the item uh you know do so because this item was heavily corroded and i think japan you want at first they were um i'm not really sure if in the beginning they were better about looking for things like corrosion and stuff but i know they they have a, a reputation for um not being 100 percent on the quality control with like used items or especially old used items that take the lr44 batteries that yeah. uh, have a tendency to leak a lot um so yeah so just like you know be aware of that um <laughs> like the quality control isn't always 100 percent on vintage items but i think for pre-orders like all of my uh recent pre-orders for digimon have been from them mm -hmm. and it's been really really great and um they get to me in a very timely manner and i have no complaints at all so yeah i think japan you want is uh overall it's a really good service i think it's kind of better than uh like hobby link japan and that kind of thing because it's not such a huge hobby uh, service type site, it's you know, specific. like it's, it's not, uh, yeah, it's very specific. I mean, they've expanded a lot. Yeah, like, no, they've they have, expanded a lot. They have a lot of uh, cool, um, like extra Japanese stuff. Like I know they stocked mm -hmm. the uh, the new Digimon card game. They mo they just mm -hmm. recently restocked <sighs> on. Uh, oh, dude, don't remind yeah, no, me. I, I want to play like, it so bad. Uh, God. Okay, like you and I ordered our pe our uh, OG pendulums at the same time, and then like as soon as we got them, I looked at how much they were selling the the starter packs for the card $5. game for. It's like five dollars. Yeah. I was like, why didn't we order a pack? I was like so upset. Now I'm I was just like, so upset. I feel like I'm, I'm like a like a panhandler. I'm just like like, hey, you ordered from Japan, you want? Can I can I can I, can I, can I toss five dollars at you? <laughs> I really, yeah. Uh, I know he was oh, ordered multiples of the of the cards, so um, when the pandemic's over, I'll probably pop over to his house and play some of them. Oh, I hate you guys. I'm always jealous when I see you guys hanging out. I'm so <laughs> jealous. <laughs> I actually have a sort of fun story about Japan you want. So Ooh. before we move on to the next next one. So since I have the Twitter notifications on and I see every single time they update their, their, their stock, I am acutely aware of what items they have had in stock like for a while and what's new so for a string of months and it really was months they would have a red d scanner version one sitting there in the picture every single time they updated their uh their social media with the restock and every single time without fail i would go to the site to see if it was there and it would not be there and every single restock they would show the picture of the red d scanner and i was like they're messing with me i don't <laughs> i did not even want it i didn't even want the d scanner i just was so confused of why, why why it was there in the picture every single time and it was never posted and my theory was that since it is such a recognizable item and it looks great 
it was there to get people drive people to the page that was my theory so one day they put it up they put they, it, it didn't show up for a bit and then it showed up again which makes me even more confused like did you just forget to do this again like i don't i don't get it but they put it up i saw it and i was like enough is enough so i messaged them on instagram and i said hey i noticed that you put a picture of a red d scanner in your restock post but it wasn't there when i went to check what's up with that and they said sorry it was a mistake we listed it here it is for forty dollars and i was like wow <laughs> finally this is like this is like a victory right like I, I i got them to actually put it up for sale and i was like i would be dumb if i didn't buy it so i got it <laughs> and here it is i don't like i didn't even want it it exists now but now they can never put it in their pictures again <laughs> So, dude, dude, I remember when you bought it. I could not believe it. I was like, I thought it was like broken or like some kind of model no. or like something. Like, but they actually, but why, why did they ever put it for sale? I don't, okay, so like, what the mystery continues. Forty dollars. We don't know. Is an amazing price for one of these. So it's like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was like, a, oh man, he figured it out. The conspiracy. <laughs> We better give them a good price. That was so it. funny. You, you were so obsessed with that. Oh my it was god! So it was funny. It's like it, it would be. I think it would be a shame if uh, if I didn't buy it at that oh point. My god. But uh, but yeah, here we are. And it's actually it's actually useful to me now because I got a Pendulum Progress and they they apparently interface. So so that's cool. So that's my, very cool. That's my little story about <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it. It was worth the obsession. Um, okay. So last but least. We have a, Last and a site and an eBay seller called Digivicemon. Now, these guys are really the worst of the worst when it comes to marking up things at absurd, absurd values. Uh, if if you can find something at like a hundred dollars on eBay, rest assured you'll probably find it for two hundred dollars on Digivicemon. Um, and if you stumble across their listing on eBay, that's going to be the highest priced one. Um, they, I think from what I've heard, they're, they're, they're pretty slow to ship out. I know Humulus has used them in the past, and it's taken a while for them to ship out this overpriced um, product that he's, he, he wanted to buy. I think it was an IC. Uh, and not just that, but recently there was a story that got posted to a facebook group about someone who wanted to buy a pendulum x and they or they put in an order for it from digivice mon for 280 dollars which is a really expensive digivice or a device and they canceled his order and then put it back up for sale for 560 dollars so don't know what that's about what do you <laughs> what why you did what? that it's, why it's just doesn't make any like, sense i i don't know mm, why they would do that they've, they've mm, been mm, known mm, for a while mm. to mark up their stuff to mm. like really dumb values uh and it used to be i don't like yeah it. it used to be people would recommend them as like a last resort type thing if you can literally not find any other seller to to get these devices but at this point I would absolutely not recommend them just because of that kind of that shady practice of nope. canceling and relisting. That's like, that should be the kiss oh, that's of death horrible. for your That reputation. is, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, goodbye. Goodbye. That is so bad. That is so terrible. Yeah. Like, you think nobody, somebody's not going to notice that you did that? Like, really? <sighs> uh, and like, I never see any of their items sell. Like, do they actually sell anything? Like, they, like I said, you know they, I mean? they used to be seen as like a last resort type thing. So people would buy from them if they could literally find no other seller to to get the device that they desperately wanted but at this point i think you got to take the l you got to bite you got to just have a little bit of integrity and yeah don't do it. no oh my god don't do it guys like and like that's another thing is that it looks like their website like looks very official and like again we were talking about you know new people think when they see those prices they're like wow this must be the accurate price when it's especially when it's on such a nice looking website don't yeah buy and it. They're, they're they're smart about how they do um 
SEO, like search engine optimization, like they'll, cause they have um, file islands device guides on their website. Mm-hmm. So if mm-hmm. you're Googling a guide for a device, you might stumble onto their site accidentally just because mm-hmm. you wanted information about how to run an older device. Oh, dude, sometimes sometimes their website comes up first. Like when I was first looking for a mini guide, mm-hmm. um, their website was the first one to come up. That's bad. And like, that's, I, I was using it, yeah. That's so bonkers to me. They, 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 they so definitely bad. get more hits though, I think, just because of, uh, because of all of that, plus they're, they're, a, uh, they're a merchant. So it's, it's very, uh, very, very nice job on the SEO, pretty garbage Ooh. job on the customer service and the, uh, the shady business practices. So that's pretty disgusting. <sighs> would not recommend them nope, at all. Nope, would not recommend. Thumbs down, three thumbs down. Three thumbs down. If I had an extra thumb <laughs> to put down, you'd get it. It would be there. Yeah. It would be down. Okay. Oh, God. That just makes me so sad. Yeah. I don't like it. But I think I think that's all we have for you guys today. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully this was helpful. Yeah, yeah. Um, I learned a bit. It's hard to. Yeah, you did. Amazon Good. Japan. <laughs> yeah, it was on Japan. That's always like it's not always the best option, but it is an option. Yeah, I mean, you got it. You got to mm-hmm. for a hobby like this where you, the, the prices are constantly fluctuating and different everywhere you look it's always good to have multiple mm-hmm. avenues to uh yeah to check these things out definitely yeah and before we sign off i wanted to say congratulations for winning the pendulum uh, tournament <laughs> that was thanks. so good that was that such was a, a good like tournament. i i enjoyed uh yeah. seeing what everybody raised i think for the most part everyone raised a completely different digimon i think you and humulus ended up both with yeah. uh, metal seedermon but besides mm-hmm. that um i had boltmon who is um dying and getting older and more decrepit <laughs> every second I talk. Um, uh, Xanax Dude All had sad boy. Saber Leomon, who did really well in this tournament. Um, Aaron had War Greymon, which was very frightening to fight. Yeah. Um, I didn't I didn't have to fight her because I don't have Alpha Terminal. I need to get on that. Yeah, that I was, gotta get on yeah. there. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that was a fun tournament. Yeah. Uh, can't wait for the next one. Next one's gonna be a Blockbuster hash, so... Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for that one. That yeah. one will be fun. Mm-hmm. I need something. I need to like make a good decision about something solid to run because I've just been like not Me feeling too. anything right yeah, now. I want to <laughs> be like, I want to be unique with it. I feel like uh, there's always you can always be like, oh, I'm Godzilla, run the V5. Egg. Yeah, but uh, I wanna I wanna come up with something. Um, yeah, I, I actually I kind of want to run my Mothra along my Mothra Tamagotchi alongside. That's a good idea. Whatever. Yeah, I think that would be cute yeah. and fun. Also, I haven't run it in like forever, so it should be pretty good. But yeah, um, I think that's that. That officially now that's is everything that on we that. have. Yeah. That's that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We hope that you are and or listening. I don't know if anybody's on SoundCloud, but you know it's there. If yeah. anybody wants to listen, um, uh, if you have any recommendations for uh, topics you'd like to hear us discuss, please let us know in the comments below. Um, and other than that, we will see you guys next, see time. You next time. Bye. Bye.